September the 13th, 2014, uh, and it's a little after lunchtime, my time here. I just wanted to make another uh, video. Uh, today's topic is concerning uh, Mr. Matthew Paul DeHart. Uh, he's been in the news of late um, <clears throat> concerning a uh, political asylum issue that he's been seeking in Canada, he and his family. Uh, Paul is originally from Franklin, Tennessee, uh, not too far where I'm located here in Kentucky, uh, but um, he um, was allegedly, quote unquote, a part of the uh, uh, hacktivist group, hacktivist collective Anonymous, and uh, went under the uh, handle, the Twitter handle, and also the anonymous handle of uh, Koenig, uh, was one of his handles. And um, I knew him under that handle. I did not know his actual name, did not know his actual location. Of course, he was kept anonymous. But uh, I befriended him on Twitter and also some other uh, social media uh, interests as well. And uh, we shared similar passions and interests uh, as far as current events are concerned and political views. And uh, I found Koenig and Matt DeHart to be uh, very engaging, very informative and a very uh, passionate and compassionate individual. And when I heard about his story, uh, I didn't really put start putting two and two together until I started reading some things that were uh, shared by Anonymous and uh, also some uh, other personal friends of uh, Matt's as well. And um, uh, started then putting, realizing and putting two and two together. And I said, well, I need to help my friend in any way I can. And, that's what this video is really all about. It's a public service announcement on his behalf. And I'll link uh, some um, uh, information in the description section of the video when I'm through with it today. But um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Matt's story and uh, his issues. Uh, apparently for the last year, year and a half, he has been trying to seek along with his family political asylum in Canada. But the long story short, the Canadian government and the government of the United States of America is blockading him from doing that because of an alleged white paper report that Matt has uh, that was given to him. I don't know how he obtained it. I don't know if he obtained it by accident, uh, if it was something that he stumbled onto uh, in his uh, research and development. Uh, or what exactly, I don't know the particulars of that, but he has a white paper report uh, on concerning the United States federal government. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, issues involving uh, with Iraq or Afghanistan or if it's something else, maybe it's something to do with Russia and Ukraine, uh, maybe it's something else to do in the Middle East. I don't know what it is exactly, the white paper report, but um, Allegedly, he has this white paper report and it's on a either a flash drive or a thumb drive, some type of drive. The FBI raided his home twice in 2010. They found nothing. Uh, the um, public story, the official public story is, quote unquote, is that Matthew Paul DeHart is a uh, pedophile and a pornographer and um, uh, he's someone that uh, uh, has uh, mental issues and really can't be trusted and probably needs to be locked away in a mental institution. Uh, but from what I know of Matthew DeHart, aka Koenig, uh, I see nothing along those lines and have never seen anything along those lines. So therefore I don't buy the quote unquote official story. Um, and I think that the government of the United States, along with the government of Canada, is using that against him. But in 2010, they raided his home, they, and as I said, they found nothing. Uh, and they took all kinds of uh, uh, computers and electronic equipment that belonged to Matt and his family, uh, combed over Matt's personal finances, his family's personal finances, etc., etc., etc. They found no kind of illegality, no kind of issues. But what started the quote-unquote officialdom with him being a child pornographer and a pedophile, etc., was the fact that he played a game called the World of Warcraft. 
it's an online game. Uh, apparently, there's an online, large online gaming uh, community. Uh, with that, I've never played the game myself. I know about it, but I've never played it myself, so um, I'm not involved in anything like that. But Matt was involved with that, and he was active in that. And he befriended some people on there, apparently some new people that were new to the game and um, uh, new to the group, if you will, the collective. And one day struck up a conversation with him or with some, some people about Anonymous. And I don't know if he did some braggadocio or whatever, but he had said that he was involved, quote unquote, in some kind of way with the activist group Anonymous. Uh, I do know for a fact that Anonymous is genuinely interested in his situation, in his political asylum. They have uh, done some reporting and they have shared some information online in various social media forms and have uh, some of them have started a, um, uh, a, a free Matt to Heart campaign, if you will. And uh, I have shared information as far as that is concerned and will continue to do so because Matt is my friend and uh, I um, uh, appreciate his friendship. But um, they um, shared information. The officialdom is that this individual or individuals that he befriended were underage. Uh, supposedly a couple of them were teenage girls. Some were teenage boys. Uh, and Matt is now 30 years old, and so it looks bad, quote unquote. Uh, the official to me is this, that he drove from his home in Franklin, Tennessee, to uh, someplace in upstate Indiana where they were from, and um, uh, bought alcohol, gave them drugs, had sex with them, etc., whatever, and returned home back to Franklin, Tennessee. The officialdom is is that these individuals, their parents, they were underage, they found out about it, etc. So the parents filed a police report. The parents and the police get involved. The police finds out who Matt is, comes to his home in Tennessee, questions him, questions his parents, etc. And that then starts the ball rolling with the FBI because they turned him over to the FBI, etc., to be investigated. It was a, a huge snowball effect. And they began, slowly but surely, the police state began to create a narrative, a narrative that is not true in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But they created this narrative, this public narrative, <coughs> that um, He's a pornographer, he's a pedophile, he's crazy, he's this, he's that. All in hopes of getting supposedly this thumb drive, this flash drive, whatever it is, that contains this white paper report that he somehow obtained through his quote-unquote anonymous connections. Matt was supposed to lead to uh, trying to get this white paper report this is also a rub, but Matt was supposedly trying to get this white paper report either to WikiLeaks or Wikipedia or something uh, for them to do a quote-unquote official story on it, whatever it was, study it, examine it, do an official story on it, put it up online, and it would go viral, quote-unquote. I still believe that that will happen in the event that Matt gets uh, political asylum in Canada, uh, but I have no foreknowledge or insight into that. Um, but they have pursued, the FBI has pursued and been pursuing Matt and his family since 2010. Now we come to 2013, 2014, Matt is arrested and has been arrested several times by the FBI, been questioned, and he's also, he's also been tortured. Now, I believe this. Uh, I believe this based on the information that has been shared and the particulars that has been shared with his questioning and his detainment by the FBI, how he was treated by the FBI, how he was handled, how his situation was handled, how the police state ultimately 
has treated Matthew Paul DeHart. Uh, although there is no quote unquote official record online for anyone to view, and I could be wrong about it, but I haven't seen anything. So I have their word, and I trust them at their word. I trust the people that are involved. I trust Matt's word. I trust his family's word. I trust the anonymous people, people's word. Uh, but there is not, to my knowledge, there's no official record that of his actual torture. There is, however, official record of his detainment, his arrest. Uh, I don't know if there were some trials or what here in the United States. But Matt was mishandled and mistreated and has been mishandled and mistreated by the police state. His family and him pack up from Franklin, Tennessee, and they go to Canada. Uh, either uh, Baffin Island or uh, Mackinac Island, I'm sorry, forgive me, it is up towards Maine. It is up on the border of Maine in Canada. Uh, there are several island peninsulas there. Um, it's one of those Canadian islands, and they went there. They basically contacted the Canadian government and said that we're seeking political asylum. Our family has been harassed. It's been harangued. Our son has been harassed. He's been harangued by the FBI, by the police state here in America, and we're seeking political asylum in Canada. Canada initially grants it. But the uh, story with Matt being a quote-unquote pedophile, a child pornographer, being crazy, etc., catches up with him. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, Attorney General's office in Washington, D.C. finds out that he is in Canada, etc. I don't know how, but they found out about it, reached out to officialdom in Canada, the officialdom in Canada, the attorneys general there, or, or their version thereof, reaches out to wherever Matt and his family are located there, and they arrest Matt. This is the thing, too. They don't arrest the family, <coughs> forgive me, but they harass and harangue them. They continue to harass and harangue them. Matt is arrested by Canadian authorities, questioned over several hours, several days, I don't know if Canadian authorities tortured him or not, but there was several hours and several days of detainment, and uh, there has been, I do know, some trials in Canada. Matt has obtained legal representation in Canada and is, and as I said, his family is seeking political asylum. I hope that they get it. Uh, and again, I will link the necessary links to Matt's story, and I hope that people will take a look for themselves and don't just take my word for it but this is an issue here and when the attorneys general of the United States of America and what amounts to the attorneys general for Canada gets involved in an issue like this this is pretty heavy dealings and I believe that it has something to do with that white paper report that he supposedly has or does not have um, I believe that it is interconnected and intertwined, and whatever it is, it's apparently pretty damning because, I mean, to be told that you're quote-unquote a uh, child pornographer and that you're a pedophile and that you're crazy, etc., etc., and that your family's crazy and you're crazy and you all need to be locked away in mental institutions is pretty serious business. It's pretty serious business. So I'm troubled by that, but I believe that all of this has to do with the fact of this white paper report, whatever it is. And again, I've not seen it. I don't know anything about it. I only have people's word about it. I take the people that are involved at their word because of who's involved. And again, I only knew Matt by his uh, social media handle, Koenig, but he never struck me as an individual that was crazy, that was a pedophile, that was a child pornographer, etc. Never once. I've known him for a long time. I've known him since at least 2010, really, when all of this started. So, three, four years. And he's never struck me as an individual of that sort, kind or sort. So it's troubling to me. So, 
I'm reaching out to any and all individuals who will view this video and will take an interest, I hope and I pray, in Matt's story and Matt's family's story ultimately and help them to get the political asylum that they seek. Uh, Canada wants to return Matt and his family to the United States of America apparently to face charges, whatever those formal charges are that Mr. Holder has, which you know is this official term about him being a child pornographer and pedophile, etc. It, it won't wash. It won't wash. It's having to do with this white paper report. So I hope that the individuals, again, as I said, the individuals that will sit down and view this video and watch it will look at Matt DeHart, Matthew Paul DeHart's story, examine it for themselves, take an interest in it, be active in it. Uh, individuals like Matt have done great service, great public and private service. Matt is himself a veteran of their wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was a a uh, member of the United States Air Force was discharged uh, for stress and other uh, mental and physical issues, medically discharged in uh, 2008, forgive me, uh, but uh, he is good people through and through. I don't believe the story. I just don't believe it. And uh, I appreciate you all's time today and thank you for your attention. Again, I'll link all of the necessary links and particulars in the description section of the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a very good weekend. Thank you.